Hello everyone, this is Diana Kim, Criminal Justice Librarian. I'd like to welcome you back to Developing a Search Strategy, Part 4, Using Databases. So our goals for this video is that by the end, you will know how to find databases on the library website and enter keywords into a database or databases using connectors to find articles, ebooks, and etc. for your research. As you will recall from our previous videos, there are five steps to building a search strategy. One is to define your topic and write a narrative research question. From that question, we can identify our initial keywords. Then in part two, we talked about how we can expand those keywords using synonyms and related terms. In part three, we talked about how we connect those keywords with connectors such as and, or, and not. And now we're going to talk about how we choose databases to locate articles, books, and the other types of sources that you might need for your research. So using databases, how do we find them? Well, we go to the library website at library.shsu.edu. That's what the website looks like if you haven't been there already. And primarily, I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. So. Um, we can go directly to the library website, or I'm going to show you how to get to it from the main Sam Houston website as well, um, so that you can get to it easier, easily uh, this way as well. Um, scrolling all the way down here on the right hand side, under library NGL, all we have to do is click that, and that takes us right to the library website. Um, a couple of things I want to point out here is our library hours. Because of things that are going on and changing rapidly, our building's hours are subject to change at a moment's notice. So if you're ever can, um, curious about what hours the building is open, it's right here towards the top of the website. And then also um, this Ask a Librarian tab, that's our online chat. And that is staffed all the hours that the library is open by librarians. You can put your name here or leave it anonymous, um, and we can answer very basic questions. We can also answer more um, specific questions. We can send you links to articles. If you're upstairs on the fourth floor, for example, in the building and somebody's being noisy, you can text us and chat with us there, and we can send somebody else up to quiet them down. There's just a lot of things that we can do, but it's handy if you need something answered right away. Okay, so now let's talk about our online databases. We essentially have three tabs here in the center of the screen. Engine Orange is our combined search engine. It pulls from our books and media, our video content. Um, it also part pulls from our articles and more. So you may be um, thinking to yourself, okay, well, if it pulls from everything, why would I do anything other than just stop here? The problem is, is that it only communicates with these other two tabs. Well, primarily the articles tab at a rate of about 80%. And unfortunately, that really boils down to the company that um, has created this search engine communicates well with some of our databases and not well with others. And unfortunately, there's not much we can do about that. So we're kind of left with what we have. So while I tell folks, you know, Engine Orange is a good place to start your research, you can do article research there. I typically do my article researching in the Articles and More tab with the, art, um, the subject specific databases, which I'll show you in a little bit. And I do my book searching in Engine Orange. So I'll show you kind of how that looks in a little bit. Um, but that's typically how I do my searching. Um, books and media is exactly what it sounds like. That's our online catalog and some of our um, video content. But again, that stuff can be found in the Engine Orange searches. And then our articles and more tab is what I want to talk about first. You'll see here that we've taken the guesswork out of trying to decide what databases apply in which subject. You certainly could come up to this all databases A to Z and we have a nice um, list here at the top. And, you know, you can kind of browse through and, okay, this has that, that's nice, and what does this have? Okay, if you don't have anything, you know, better to do, hey, why not? You know, go ahead and check out, check out everything there. But if you want to really get in fast and start doing some searching, just go to the Articles and More tab and go down to this Databases by Subject because the librarians have created a bunch of research guides that are subject specific, so that takes the guesswork out of trying to decide which databases are for which subject. This one is mine. 
Um, you can see I've got our primary criminal justice databases there, and then in the center, our security studies databases. Um, I also have some forensic science materials. I am not the forensic science librarian. That is Lisa Connor. However, I do have a few of the databases for that discipline there as well. Um, as far as making a decision about which one you want to use, I got to tell you the one I use the most is Criminal Justice Abstracts. I just find that I get the, I like how the layout looks. I like the content. It's fairly robust. Um, that's where I always start. And I also go secondary to ProQuest Criminal Justice. These are two competing companies. So what appears in Criminal Justice Abstracts may or may not appear in Criminal Justice Abstracts. What I mean by that is, um, there are some areas of commonality. So let's say, for example, Criminal Justice Abstracts contains the Time, Time Magazine and People Magazine, and ProQuest contains Time Magazine and uh, Popular Mechanics. Now, they don't contain those because those are popular magazines. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, for example, it could be a situation where both databases contain some journals that are the same, but also they may contain ones that are unique to one or the other. So by not looking in, in ProQuest, I could be missing some things that are not in criminal justice abstracts, so I want to search in both of those. Um, the rest of these are sort of other things, FBI records and NCJRS topics. Um, Criminology Collection is a SAGE um, company uh, database. I don't find it as effective for my research personally, um, so I pretty much stick to CJ Abstracts and ProQuest Criminal Justice. But one caveat I want to talk about before we get into searching is just remember, as I've pointed out here on the right-hand side, criminal justice is very much an interdisciplinary field. That means that when you're dealing with criminal activity, you may be talking about sociology, you may be talking about psychology, chemical dependency issues and things of that nature that fall in those categories. So bear that in mind when you're doing your searching. And I'll show you how to pull in some of these other databases, such as psychology and sociology, in CJ Abstract so you can do all your searching in one place. But without further delay, let's go ahead and take a look at what the database looks like. So this is our advanced search. It's the default option. You'll see here on the left-hand side, our and, or, and not connectors appear there. You can leave it at and because that's where it defaults. And there's no need to really mess with that if you don't want to. Um, over here on the right-hand side, however, you'll see that you have lots of different options there. If you know a specific author or a title that you're looking for, um, you can use this to look for articles that are very specific, that you know exactly the article you're looking for. But when we're doing a keyword search like what we're going to be doing today, all you have to do is leave everything at their defaults. Um, okay, so without any more delay, let's go ahead and do that um, first um research question that we came up with in whatever part one, I guess, of the videos now. Um, we talked about the efficacy. Oh, and by the way, well, um, we can't just type in the, our research question as a sort of narrative in this, in this bar. We, we can't do it that way. We really have to separate these out with our connectors and whatnot. Um, and it's really important how you spell words. I'm a horrible typist, and so I tend to mistype things and unfortunately the database doesn't realize if you misspell efficacy it's literally going to search for exactly what you type in so um, it's important that you spell things correctly um, so we talked about court ordered and um, substance abuse I am typing terribly Oh, that's so annoying. And um, also, by the way, you can add as many uh, additional terms as you wish. You could put efficacy here and then skip a line and then put court order down here. It makes no difference. You can put it however you want. The court or the um, the database will just simply ignore it um, if there's a, a bar that's not populated. And just because so it looks nicer, I'll take that off. Um, one thing I want to point out while we're here. Um, you'll see that I put substance abuse in quotes. That's because I want the, 
I'm really trying to control how the computer is um, accepting or um, searching for my, my items. I'm telling the computer here that I really want this, the word substance abuse to be treated as one term as opposed to separate words, substance or abuse. I want it to be looked at together and in that order. So you can use quotation marks to sort of control. This works for terms like death penalty or global warming. When you really, those two words together is the term. They're not, it's sort of an isolation. So you'll recall our original search was the, what does the research tell us about the efficacy of court-ordered substance abuse treatment? So there we have our original search. That's literally from our initial research question. All we have to do is hit search here on the right hand side and unfortunately two little articles wow that's not much at all and um, that's disappointing but we took the time to go through and pull out all of these different synonyms for our searches so we will definitely find more articles and i'll show you how that works in a second but before i do let's go to choose databases up here and add a few additional databases like I was saying, because criminal justice is a very much multidisciplinary topic, we want to pull in from our sociology, psychology databases as well. One I always will add is Academic Search Complete. Kind of like Engine Orange, it pulls from a little bit of all of these, but not at like 100%, but it's a good sort of safety net. Um, and then I typically, you can see here, criminal justice is already checkmarked because that's the one we're searching in. We can go to the psychology and behavioral sciences collection, and then I'll usually throw in SOS index as well. So that's our psychology and our sociology databases from this company. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now when I go up here and show all, you can see that we're searching now simultaneously in criminal justice abstracts and all these other places as well. So now let's rerun the same search and see if we get anything in addition. Okay, only five. So that's still somewhat disappointing. Um, yeah, that's not going to work for me, especially if I'm writing any a paper of any great length. But because we have engaged in this process of incorporating our synonyms, you will see that we will have much more to work with. Okay, so again, how we're going to enter these in the database is literally you don't have to, you can do it two ways. You can do it like that, or you can, I typically will just cap them, um, use caps when I'm putting my ORs and stuff in there just because it's consistent with this. I don't know, it's sort of a thing with me, but you can put it, it it'll read it either way. Um, so we, effectiveness was one of the terms, um, synonyms for efficacy. We talked about success. And successfulness. So another little tip, when you have something that, a word that is a root, so success and then successfulness, so success or is right before successfulness, you can either type in success or, and then spell out the word successfulness, or you can save yourself a little headache or a little extra typing by putting a wild card um, asterisks here. And if you have any questions about that, go over here all the way to the right hand side and click help and it will actually tell you when you're doing searching how to do various types of searches those um, connectors that I talked about they're actually called boolean connectors but I feel like that word is not necessary so I just leave it out but it will explain how to use those connectors here if you have a question about that um, also uh, searching with wildcard and truncation symbols that's what I'm doing here with that my little star asterisk asterisk um, so you can see here how it works for like a word like compute or computing when you put that there you get computer computers computing computation etc and so forth so it's a way to expand without having to come out with every possible deviation of a word okay so there's that we're going to go down to our next line we talked about court mandated as a synonym um, compulsory and required and then for substance abuse we did drug abuse and we did chemical dependency and finally we did addiction okay 
And then for treatment, we chose therapy and the related term of programs. Okay, so now we have a fairly nice rounded body of synonyms that we can use. Let's go ahead and see if we can boost up our two to five to something more than that. Okay, y'all, I don't know a better way to demonstrate this than to see it right in front of you. We went from five articles in that search, that search we just did with our four initial terms to 2,553. And I'm telling you, because we are being so specific about our synonyms and our unrelated terms, these articles are going to be relevant to our research. So had we stopped with these four terms, we would have missed out on all of these 2,550, do we have three, two, we have, three, yeah, um, results because we simply didn't engage in the process of using synonyms. Now, don't get bogged down with this. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a stressful thing. Um, it's just a matter of sitting down and maybe getting online and looking up synonyms using a thesaurus to kind of, you know, troubleshoot it more or less. There are some terms that you're not going to have synonyms for. If it's a proper name, um, President Trump, for example, you're not going to have a synonym for that. Or if it's a specific medical or legal term, there are some words that just don't have synonyms. But I chose this example um, and talk to your professors about um, different ideas about that because I really wanted to pick out an example that really illustrates this well. And this is one that you can really expand out quite, quite, um, quite well exactly um, because of the fact that there are so many different terms that describe the same types of um, words here. So you can see exactly how um, beneficial this really is. So now let's go ahead and go back. I'm going to just simply copy um, and go into our criminal justice, um, I'm sorry, ProQuest criminal justice. Um, so what we can do here is if we go to our advanced search, oh, it's already there, okay. Um, I was running the search a little bit earlier. I was just going to copy and paste into each one of these. Um, but since I've already done that, it's already here. It's going to save a little time. I can run my search in the uh, ProQuest criminal justice database as well and um, see how many hits I get there. Here's a 15,997. So some of those may be in common with some of the titles that you're seeing in CJ abstracts, but they also may be unique. So, um, it is also a really good place to do your searches. Okay, so now let's go back and talk about, oh, and by the way, um, before I get too far ahead of myself, in the next video, I'm going to talk to you about how to apply various limiters to reduce that number and make it a little bit more manageable. For now, it's just uh, the demonstration to show how those synonyms really work. Okay. So now that we've talked about finding articles, we can go back to our main library website and we can use, for example, Engine Orange to find um, books and eBooks. All you have to do is click on this advanced search in Engine Orange. And again, these bars look exactly the same. You can expand out, you can make them you know, fewer, just like we did before. Um, and then it's just a matter of, I can go ahead and um, copy and paste our um, our, re, our uh, search terms into those bars just like this real quick. Um, this is a little bit clunky. I have another tip for you to avoid this and I'll show you that just in a second. But this is just, um, oh, I'm clicking on too much, too many things here. Um, this is just kind of showing you like if you were to type these in initially, um, kind of what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It looks just like the other ones. Um, and then we can hit search here. Now um, with this search, because we're in the combined uh, search engine, it's going to be, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, eight, eight almost 900,000 things. But 
what you can do over here is um, these limiters, let me see if I can expand that out. Yeah, um, there's some source types down here that, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I'm going to talk to you about limiters in um, the next video. But for purposes of Engine Orange, if you want to specifically look for ebooks, for example, you can use this source type to click on ebooks right here, and it'll automatically eliminate everything other than ebooks. You can also, um, you know, do that for regular books. So if I unclick this and just look at print books, for example, all I have to do is go ahead and click on books, for example, and I can find things that are relevant in that particular source type. So that's how you're going to do that. Um, you can see that I have the option of looking at academic articles as well. Um, magazines, newspapers, all kinds of stuff. So if you're looking for something other than just journal articles, go ahead and use Engine Orange as a way to um, get to those particular pieces of information as well. Okay, there's one other database I want to show you before we adjourn, and that is um, Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a, it's not just Google, it's Google Scholar, which is different. Um, and so we are going to go into our Articles and More tab. Um, when you use Google Scholar, this is not just regular Google. It's actually um, academic materials. And it's just another place where you can find journal articles. And I know some professors like to use that as well. So what we do here is um, it doesn't really matter which one of these we go to, but you'll see here on the left-hand side, um, there's this little Boolean slash phrase piece. Um, when you're in Google Scholar, you'll see I don't have the option here of expanding this out into various lines. Um, so I'm kind of constrained with that. But the trick is, the little cheat that I have, is all you have to do is click on that Boolean phrase, that link, and what it will automatically do is create a single barred research um, or string for you that you can simply highlight and copy. And then, because basically what it does is it, it's the same search, but just done in one long line with, with uh, parens and stuff like that. But it's harder to explain and to figure out when I'm actually showing it to students. And I don't write things out like this. I like these long, these of individual bars because it just makes way more sense to me. Um, but then all we have to do is go in, we can just drop that in to Google Scholar and then we can hit search here and it's going to do that same search in Google Scholar. So just a little trick there on how to do that. So if, you're, if your professor wants you to do some searching in Google Scholar, that's the way to go about that. Okay. I think that basically covers everything. Let's go back into our um, PowerPoint. Reviewing what we have learned so far, we know, now know basically how to find the databases, how to go into Engine Orange to look for books and things like that, um, how to find article databases. Oh, and um, you know, before we go, I'm going to go back into, we didn't talk about um, we talked about books, articles, but we didn't talk about our media content. So I'm going to back out of here real quick um, and go into our Engine Orange. Because I still have that um, long sentence available. Oh, no. Did it get rid of it? No, I think it did. Okay, not a problem. I saw these uploaded. Um, I will copy this. Um, and go into here. I can just drop that in there too if I want to do that. Um, to get to our media materials, which is our videos and things like that, you can also limit that um, through Engine Orange. I'm sorry, through, um, yeah, through Engine Orange um, as well, just by scrolling down here and under source types. Um, we didn't quite get to that. 
um, we can go down and find electronic resources um, and videos. Oh, I'm surprised there's only one video. I think that's wrong. Um, but sometimes Indian Orge is a little bit weird. But that's one way to get to a video um, on, and it could be because I'm so being so, so specific about my search terms because there are a lot of search terms um, in this initial search. But that's how you'll do that for videos as well. So I just wanted to highlight that before we go. Um, okay, so where were we? Let's go to what we've learned, we found databases, we learned how to search. And let's do a quick knowledge check before we go. Which connector again will give you the most results just as a review? Is it and, or, or not? It's or, because remember or equals more. And that is because or tells us we will accept anything, cats or dogs or bears or elephants, any and all articles that have at least one of these terms will do. And one final one, which of the following will yield fewer results? Naturally, cats and dogs or cats or dogs. It's cats and dogs because in this particular search, both the word cats and the word dogs must appear before an article will be retrieved. Any questions about this? I realize this video is really long and I apologize for that, but it's hard to do a demonstration without really getting into all that. F please feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to re-demonstrate this, to show you um, other searches, do some more demonstrations in our databases, whatever it is that you are confused about or need a little bit more help with. I am happy to go over this because I'm telling you, once you have this information down, you can search in any of the databases and you'll be a pro at it. Just getting over that initial hurdle of figuring out how those words and those connectors kind of fit together is the big piece of it. But once you have it, you can search in any database for any subject and you'll have it down like a pro. So feel free to contact me with anything that you want to go over. Uh, stay tuned, however, in part five, we're going to learn how to apply those limiters kind of like we did in Engine Orange, but a little bit differently in our databases so that we can manage our search results.